checkmate. Is there anyone present who thinks he can play chess? What odds on the boat race now, as some Cambridge fellow said in the last movie turn issue? Well, you know the result, and this is how it all happened. Cambridge won the toss, and thereby, as some supporters thought, the race. But in any case, the Surrey Station. Oxford are out first, of course, as challengers. A crew of hefty men on whom dark blue hopes are pinned. Then come the light blues. Superbly confident. Thirteen successive victories make you that way. They have dash and a great power of spurting, critics say, against Oxford's strength and stamina. At the stake boat, the few seconds before the gun idle by. Then off. It's a false start and they're called back, an occurrence unprecedented in boat race history. The suspense is repeated and then eventually they're away. Cambridge have the advantage of the curve of the river over the first two miles and Oxford's hopes must depend on their ability to hang on to the light blue boat until the second bend of the S-shaped course transfers the advantage to the Middlesex station. It's soon clear that there's no premature spirit of defeat about this Oxford crew. And neck and neck, or nip and tuck, as I believe the expression is, the two boats race towards Hammersmith Bridge. For every spurt, there's an answer by the rival stroke, and the leaders change several times by the time that the bridge is shot with Cambridge slightly ahead. At this point last year, Cambridge put on the amazing spurt which took them out in front. This year, it's Oxford's turn to pile on the energy. The grilling struggle goes on in slack water with a weak tide and no advantage to either crew. Hodson spurts, and inch by inch Oxford draw away until with the bend of the river in their favour, they begin to see that unfamiliar spectacle, a Cambridge boat behind them. Imagine the joy of Oxford's president, Lewis, who stood down from the boat in the latter weeks of training as he sees his crew leading by half a length past the Cambridge enclosure at Duke's Meadows. It's a great race still, and although only one crew in the history of the race has gone on to victory after being behind at Barnes Bridge, no one is really prepared to believe that Cambridge are beaten yet. Such is the mesmerism of a record of 13 successive victories. And so with a final spurt, Hudson brings them home. They clearly visualised the picture of an Oxford crew racing up to Mortlake with their Cambridge rivals behind them. Perhaps you'll have suspected that I hail from the dark blue university myself. But prejudice aside, it's for the good of sport that the honours should go round. And by all the laws of nature and science, it was time for Oxford to win again. <laughs>